Um, I'll invite our last speaker now, Marichoy, who is a Nahua traditional medicine healer and human rights activist in Mexico. She was chosen as a representative indigenous spokeswoman by the National Indigenous Congress for the 2018 general election in Mexico. Please, Marichoy. I'm going to stay here. I'm afraid to go there and move around the stage. I want to, to tell you that I'm going to read a document that was made collectively. It's the voice of the people who work in the Indigenous National Congress. So I apologize and I really hope that you understand. Out of all the local struggle of territory defense to the community networks of territory defense, of autonomy, anti-capitalist, and anti-patriarchal, the indigenous con uh, Congress. With your permission, I will take the voice of all my sisters and my brothers of the Indigenous National Congress. We call this CNI. A speaker of the women and men of our communities, of different indigenous peoples from all these lands that today we call Mexico, we want to thank you for inviting us to share a word in this important event and to listen to all of you who are here today. We want to learn and we want to share. We were born as CNI in 1996 by the call of our sisters and our brothers of the Zapatist Army for National Liberation. And we were called upon to participate in the peace talks following the armed uprising on the 1st of January in 1994. This was the first time in our long history that as indigenous people of this part of Abya Yala, the American continent, which is called Mexico, came together to get to know each other and to engage in dialogue with a bad government, but also a dialogue between each other. After the signing of the three seas of San Andres, La Ranzar, which have not been fulfilled by the government yet, we decided to stay united. And in October, the 12th of October, 1996, we constituted ourselves as the Indigenous National Congress which is home to all those indigenous peoples who wish to defend our territories, our cultures, and our existence as people. Being independent from the governments and from all political parties of the capitalist, patriarchal, and colonial system. We women and we men say that when we gather together, we are an assembly and when we return to our communities, we become a network. As you already know, our territories are the treasure of the large monsters of global capitalism, of big transnational corporations for many decades now. But this is getting worse with the presidency of President Lopez Obrador who behind his lies, his national discourse, is promoting the biggest plundering and destruction of our territories, what he calls the fourth transformation. But we call this the fourth destruction. 
his mega projects of the Maya train and the interoceanic corridor and many others throughout the whole country are nothing but the handover of our territories to the big capital. Our industrial parks, our wind, they need our water, they need our gas, they need our oil, they need lithium and other minerals that can be found in Mother Earth. Additionally, they need semi-enslaved labor. They'll mainly be using the labor of migrants from, from Central America and other Southern Horizons to avoid being bothered by them at the border. In all of the corners we inhabit, we organize in order to resist based on the ancestral forces of our communities, based on our spir spirituality, which emanates from the respect for mother nature, our assemblies where we take decisions on the organization of the work and the activities in mutual help, on our authorities, which have been elected as posts in the service to the community, on parties, on the food that we share, on our music, on our dances, on the happiness of our people. As indigenous people that we are, we know that we have the right to autonomy and to self-determination. And together with our lawyer comrades, we are fighting to make these rights work. So when we see that enemies are too strong, then we call on our brothers and our sisters from other peoples and from the city as well to come and support us. And with them, we condemn and we make this uh, violations of our rights visible throughout the media and throughout social media. Together, we defend ourselves against the repression that military and police forces exert on us. We organize our communal security where they use organized crime, drug banners, and this kind of paramilitary forces, which are in the whole country. I am sure that you have heard that Mexico is one of those countries in the world that is not going through a war, apparently. But it has a high rate of, of violence with more than 100,000 disappeared people, femicides, martyrs of social activists, journalists, political prisoners, Drugs destroy the brains of our young people and they are reaching even the most remote places. So this whole disaster is, is getting worse in the areas where these mega projects are being implemented. These mega projects that are supposed to give us progress. So let's be clear, our Mexican president is not a left winger. He follows the same right-wing line as prior presidents from the PRI and the PAN with the same mechanisms to control population, but with more authoritarianism, with more deception, with more militarization, transforming the Mexican army in another big company. And they are a great danger for us, for the peoples. However, we resist and we will continue to resist. And in the midst of this resistance, our rebelliousness is alive in order to defend our own non-capitalist forms of life or, or to reconstruct them for our own roots. This way we create spaces of autonomy, such as communitarian health, security and justice, our economy, which takes care of nature as well. And wherever we can, 
our autonomous governments are placed and we organize ourselves in community networks. We haven't been able to follow the example of our Zapatist sisters and brothers to hold large autonomous regions with our local, zonal and regional assemblies, our committees of good government, our own mode of what you call democratic confederalism. But this is the dream that we follow. We want to reconstru reconstruct from our territories and our cultures new forms of organizing society in communitarian networks of, of non-capitalist and non-patriarchal autonomies. We acknowledge that our territories were colonized and throughout the centuries a large part of our minds have been colonized as well. So we need to strengthen this process of decolonization and depatriarchalization beyond the terrible genocide that was caused by the Spanish colonization, which killed 90% of the indigenous population in 50 years. It imposed the Western patriarchal system that we have inherited and that shapes nearly all of our cultures. We know that before the Spanish conquest, there existed a certain form of patriarchy in some of our indigenous cultures, but they were not as strong as the patriarchy that the Spanish colonization imposed and that now large global corporations are imposing. There is a relationship between the type of power of the Tlatuani, the Aztec emperor, and the Western system of power created in our modern Mexico, this system of political control, control which we call Prista because of the PRI, the Revolutionary Institutional Party, which held the power for more than 70 years following the Mexican Revolution, and which today permeates all the political parties and the whole of the society. Additionally, oppression and violence against women are still omnipresent in our communities, despite the example set by Comandanta Ramona in the Zapatista communities, despite the example of the women's revolutionary law, we have to acknowledge that in the Indigenous National Congress and in our communities, there is still sexism and violence against women. In the beginning, the majority of those who participated actively in the CNI were men. I was one of the few women who was acting there. But things are changing now. In 2017, when we created the Indigenous National Congress, which is made up of one woman and one man of each of the indigenous peoples coming from different regions of the country, as an initiative that was proposed by our Zapatista sisters and brothers and who appointed me as the speaker of this Congress, things started to change, like I mentioned. In December of 2019, we organized a big workshop in the Zapatista territory to talk about the patriarchal system. And more than 600 women and men from the Zapatista move movement and the National Indigenous Congress participated there. And this had a great impact on our male and our female colleagues. The idea was to hold this, uh, these workshops in all the regions of the country, but the pandemic hit, so things, um, things stayed at a standstill. Last year, we organized a workshop, and slowly but steadily, this workshop is being reproduced, talking about the issue of patriarchy 
and this is somehow spreading the seeds that we have to grow now. In prior years, as women of the CNI, we organized women's missions, but we were very few women from the indigenous people of the CNI. So we felt somehow lost among all those other people who came from the city. So now we have decided to hold our first women's meeting of the CNI, which will take place next August. And little by little, in the middle of all of, all of these difficulties, we are making progress. We learn from the Zapatista women, from the communitarian women in Bolivia, who also inspired some of us to follow this path and who are inspiring our female colleagues in the Kurdish women's movement who invited us to this meeting. We hope that these efforts will help us build new forms of non-patriarchal relations and decision-making, which we know are necessary if we want to achieve this dream that we have of a just and a fair society which will respect the differences of the power that we share amongst everyone and in what you call democratic confederalism and we also have the challenge to integrate more young people in order to create these networks starting from art and from communication we have uh, We've been known, we've been told that the female colleagues of the Kurdish women's movement want to start building a global revolutionary alliance of women with the global democratic women's confederalism. And the truth is that many of our female colleagues are still very far from having a global awareness, an international awareness but they're still convinced of the importance to unite ourselves, to gather together to transform the roots of this oppressive system. And this is why we're here, because we want to continue creating the networks like our bigger brothers and sisters, Zapatista brothers and sisters did. They promoted this during their tour for life which took place in 2021. Thank you very much for your attention. They are saying, the people united will never be defeated.